So I've had a number of teachers lately who are using Google and, and Chromebooks with their classes and uh, one of the problems they're having is managing files. In other words, it's easy to get students to share files with you as a teacher, but it's a little more difficult for the teacher to share a template or a file with the entire class because they have to manually go in the drive and add each student's name as they share it. So um, one of the things that can make that process a lot easier is having a mail group of your students because um, even though you set it up in your mail in your Gmail, you can use that mailing group in Drive as well. So what I'm going to do today is run through setting up a mail group for each of your classes. Now, part of the problem is that people balk because they're like, oh, I have to type every student's name in. And actually, you don't. You can really get your kids to do the heavy lifting with this. And that's what I'm going to walk you through. So we're going to start out in Drive. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a Google form. And a Google form, if you've not used them, um, it's basically a web page where students uh, or people fill in information. And then that information comes to you in the form of a spreadsheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a Google form that you're going to have your, all your kids fill out the next time they're in the lab, the next time they're using devices. Or you could even send the, uh, the address home with them, and they could do this at home. So what we have to do first is make the form. So I'm in my Google Drive. I'm signed in. And I'm going to go over to Create. I'm going to click Create and then Form. This brings up my form, and the first thing it's going to do is ask me for the template that I want to use, the title and theme. So I'm going to just pick a very boring, simple form here, and I'm going to name it Class List. Okay. I hit OK, and now my form is named, and I've got the blank form here. Now, we're only going to have to ask a few questions in this form. And uh, the first question is going to be a simple one. Uh, I'm going to assume I'm a secondary teacher here. Uh, elementary teachers, you probably won't have to deal with this. But uh, I'm going to assume I'm a secondary teacher and I have more than one class. So one of the questions I want to, want to ask them is, uh, what class period are you in? Okay. And then instead of a multiple choice, to make it a little simpler and less uh, difficult and uh, easier for them to get correct, I'm going to do choose from a list. So... I'll say, uh, what class period are you in? And then I can say first period is my first option, and second period is my second option. Okay? Now, you can include as many other questions as you want. Notice I click done there, and I have my first question here. But in reality, this is really the only question you would need because... You may be wondering, how do I get the kids' names? Well, we're going to cheat a little bit on that. Um, if you look up at the top of every form, it gives you three options. And the options are to require Gaston County Schools to log in to view this form to, and to automatically collect respondents' Gaston County School username and to show the progress bar. We're going to ignore the progress bar for now. These first two are the ones we want. What this simply means is that to be able to, to fill in this form, they will have to sign into their Google account first. And that's actually what we want. We also want the second one, which means it will automatically collect their Gaston County Schools username as they hit the submit button on the form. So what this form is going to be is one simple question. What class period are you in? Uh, they'll pick their class period and they'll hit submit, and then it will collect their name for me automatically. So uh, we've got our form pretty much complete here. I, I'm going to go ahead and, and go to the next step, which is to tell Google where to put these answers. So in other words, when a kid hits submit on the form, where do these answers go? So I'm going to say um, I'm going to say I want to view responses, and it's already set up the class list responses form uh, spreadsheet. And you'll notice it has a timestamp, it has what period you're in, and it has the username that it's going to capture. So this is ready. Uh, let's look at it and see what it looks like going to look like to the kids. So I'm going to go up here to form. I'm going to say go to live form. So this is what students will see when they fill this out. You notice it warns them that their username is going to be recorded when they submit this form. Um, and you'll notice it has my name here now because I'm signed into my Google account. So if I were a student, I would say I'm in first period, and then I would hit submit, and it will tell them your response has been recorded. And then they can simply close that tab. Now for us, we're the teacher, so you'll notice that right here we see the first response and it has the username and I'm going to grab this and drag it over so we have more room to look at it. it has the username it has class period and it has the timestamp telling you when they filled it out 
and it's pretty much that simple. Um, the next step we need to do is we need to get this out there where the kids can see it. So once again, I'm going to go to the live form because this is the link to that page. Now you notice this is a horrifyingly long web address. You're not going to be able to put that up on the board and let students type that in because they just won't get it right. It's too many capital letters, lowercase, and all that. So what we need to do is we need to make this a little simpler. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of it by double or triple clicking and then right click and copy. And then I'm going to open a new tab. And that new tab, I'm going to go to a URL shortener. Now there are a number of them. There's goo.gl which is a Google URL shortener. Um, you basically paste the link in and it gives you a short version. The one I actually like though is bit.ly. bit.ly Now when you go to bit.ly you can make an account, and you'll notice I have made an account because it tells at the top, it says at Goodson, meaning I'm signed in. And what happens there is if you have make an account, it will actually keep track of all your shortcuts that you've made. Um, if you don't want to do that and make an account, you don't have to. It will still make a shortened URL for you. So uh, it says right here, paste the link here to shorten. So I'm going to paste in that big, long link. And you notice it says, ah, okay, here is the short version. And so all students would have to do is type in bit.ly forward slash 1CPODIR. If you want to make that even more um, personalized, you can do so by clicking the pencil. And then you can set your own bit.ly link. So if I wanted to call it Goodson, I could do so. I'm going to hit enter. And uh-oh, you'll notice it says, sorry, that's taken. In other words, someone else in the world has already made bit.ly forward slash Goodson. So I might have to say something like Goodson class. Let's see if that works any better. Oops. Goodson class. Aha. So now that is my bit.ly. So I'm going to click the button to copy it. And I'm going to go open another browser. And the reason I'm opening another browser is so that you can see um, how this looks to someone who's not signed in. So this is how it will look for the students. So I'm going to paste that link. You could either write this link on the board or send it to students in an email. Of course, that would be difficult since you don't have an email list for them. But I would just write it on the board and get them to write, copy it down or type it directly into a browser. So bit.ly forward slash Goodson class takes the students here. Um, if they are not already signed into their Google account, it will take them to a screen asking them to sign into their Google account. And then once they do, it will take them here. And so then the student fills it out and hits submit. So what you should end up with when you're done with that is a class list. Now, I've already prepared an example one to show you. And that is my example class list. So this is roughly what it will look like once your students fill it in. Um, we have a timestamp, we have a bunch of different usernames, and then we have which class they're in. If the order is not perfect, in other words, if you had some first periods and then some second periods and then some first periods and some second periods, you can always filter this. And the way you filter is you click here to select the entire spreadsheet. And then you go over to the filter button and turn it on. And you'll notice now you have little drop down arrows here. So now I can sort by username or I can sort by class. So once you've got them in the order you want, now we're ready to actually make our mailing group list. So I'm going to start with first period. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and say, okay, these are all my first period students. And I'm just going to select all their email addresses. I'm going to right click and copy. And then I'm going to switch to my email. Now I already have my email open in another window. Here in email, I'm going to click mail and I'm going to switch to my contacts. This is where you can create new contact lists. Now you'll notice I already have some groups over here. But I'm going to hit new group. I'm going to enter a name for the group, and this name, this group will be first period class. 
you'll notice immediately that group will appear appear in your contacts. So when I click on first period class, you'll notice I don't have any contacts here yet. Luckily, there's a button right here to add to first period class. Now remember, I've already copied the list of first period class students, so I just now have to paste them into this box. And it puts the whole bunch of them in, and I click Add. And now, there are those five contacts. Now, how do you use this? Well, the secret is to remember what you named the group, first period class. So I'm going to switch out of contacts and go back to Mail. And I'm going to click Compose. Sometimes this takes a few minutes from the time you make the contact list to the time that it shows up. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try it and see if it works. So I'm just going to start typing first period class. And you notice before I even get two letters in, it's already selected it. And now I can email that group. As I said before, in addition to email, this also works in Google Drive. So if I have a document that I've created in Google Drive and I want to share that document with all my students, I simply click Share, title the document, and then down here in the Invite People box, I start typing First Period Class, and there they are. And now this document, is once I hit Send, this document will be shared with my entire First Period Class. You can also create shared folders. In Drive. And what a shared folder does is when you create that folder, let's say here's my first block folder, and I want to share this folder. In other words, anything that gets put in that folder gets shared instantly with first period. All I have to do is click this drop down, go to share, and a share box very similar to the share box for a document comes up, except this time it's for the entire folder. And I simply start typing first period class. And click OK. I got an error there because those are not real addresses. But you'll notice what happens. Once a folder is shared, you see the little person icon on that shared folder. So now, any document that I were to drag into that folder or create in that folder is now shared with the entire class. Okay, that's it. If you have any questions, please contact your tech facilitator and they can walk you through these steps. Thank you.